Ladies and gentlemen, the Kevin Barry Pipe and Drum Bands. You're all very welcome this evening. My name is John Fitzgerald. We are here in part of the St. Joseph Society. This is the 2011 Unity Fest. Tonight we are celebrating Ireland and the Irish immigrants. Everybody that came here settled here in the North End, and we were lucky enough the St. Joseph Society gave us a night to celebrate that very fact. PJ Quinn here is my partner in crime, and we, we try to line up a lovely night of entertainment for you. We also have a great award ceremony of John John Summers, and Ambassador Raymond Flynn will be receiving awards this evening. out Father Jack Izzo is with us tonight and indeed he will be celebrating Mass. Father would you please stand up and be acknowledged for sure. He'll be celebrating the Unity Mass here on Sunday at 9.30 a.m. and we encourage everybody to stop by. Uh, like I said this is the Unity Feast here by St. Joseph.
Thank you very much. Well, by 1880, more than 70,000 Irish lived in Boston. A decade later, Boston had become the only city in the United States with populations in excess of 200 where the Irish represented more than half of the foreign-born population. Efforts redoubled to organize these newly arrived Irish voters as a new and a more potent force for political change. The north end of Boston spawned and accelerated the successful growth of the Irish as a force for political change. In 1882, a young Irish guy, Patrick Collins, came, became the first Irish-born congressman from Boston. Two years later, Hugh O'Brien was elected the city's first Irish Catholic mayor. He was succeeded then in turn by Collins, who then ran for mayor and succeeded, and then, of course, John F. Honey Fitz Fitzgerald, who lived, believe it or not, on Moon Street here in the North End, and he became the first American-born Irish mayor in the United States. He was also the first mayor without a beard or a mustache, and his daughter, many of you will know, as Rose, who later married Joseph P. Kennedy, and she was born at 1890 at Four Garden Court, in 1890 at Four Garden Court, just off North Square. With the election of David Ignatius Walsh, the first Irish Catholic governor of Massachusetts, that was in 1914, and James Michael Curley's mayoral victory in the same year, there began a succession of Irish-American mayors that would span the next three decades to 1993. Now something happened. There was a conspiracy between President Clinton and the Pope, and they decided that they were going to take Ray Flynn out so they could get an Italian mayor. And beyond. We are proud to present the St. Joseph's Utility Fest 2011 Boston Irish Community Award to Mr. John Joe Summers. You know, I feel humbled. I feel really humbled tonight. And uh, all those things, those nice things they were saying about me. Uh, I don't know. I came here to America about uh, 1974. And uh, my mom had to sell a cow so I could get the fare to America. So I arrived with $50. And... Uh, I arrived in Boston, and the dreams a young man had at that time, I just couldn't explain to you. And just standing here tonight, looking out, and being in the company of a great man that I respect so much, Ray Flynn, my heart is humbled. I'd like to thank, obviously, all the committee, like you've heard this evening, but most of all, my staff in the summer's pubs, who make me look good every day of the week. Believe me. I'd like you to give them a nice round of applause. They're around here. And my family are right here in the front row, and that's my wife, Anne, there. And I loved her back in 1974 when I married her, and I love her more today. So I could be talking all night, John, and John said, for God's sake, John, Joe, keep it, keep it short. You work for me, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to sing a song that I sang to my wife, and um, it's about immigration. Last night as I lay a-dreaming Of days long ago, I say 
my mind being bent on rambling to Ireland I did fly I stepped on board a vision and I followed with the wind till next I came to anchor at the cross at Spencer Hill now it was on the 23rd of June was the day before the fair when Ireland's sons and her daughters and her friends assembled there I met the tailor quickly he's as bold as ever still sure he used to make my breeches when I lived back in Spencer Hill no I've dreamed I saw my Mary and the days of long ago Her eyes, they shone like the diamonds I remember there for so I went to see my neighbors To see what they might say Oh, there was glorial conversation At the spot her own Spencer Hill. Then I paid a flying visit to my first and my only love. That's her they rang. She was as white as any lily and as gentle as the dove. Sure, I threw my arms around her, saying, What I said to her? I, I love you still She is yet the father's daughter And the pride of Spencer Hill Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an honour And a humble time Thank you very, 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 very much Thank you, thank you For all you have done for Boston The United States, Ireland and indeed the world We honour you tonight, Ambassador Raymond L. Flynn you are hereby and humbly presented the Boston Irish Lifetime Service Award. Ladies and gentlemen, Ambassador Raymond L. Flynn. Republic of Ireland, he came here, as he told you, with really just $50 in his pocket, like so many of the Italians did, and they came to this city and this country and look at the success that the Irish and the Italians made together in the building of the greatest city uh, in the world. You know, they, there's a sign up here and it says historic North End. I suppose it's all over the North End, but maybe the young people can understand what what's historic about it. It's not just the midnight ride of Paul Revere, which is we're in here at the Prado, but it's also the people makes it make it historic. And, uh, you know, I, I can go back to so many years John, Joe, we had uh, Bill Clinton came here and just before he got real, got bef just before he got elected. We had uh, John Paul II drove right by here, except October 1st. You remember that? October 1st, 1979. He came right by here. And there's a famous picture there that was at the funeral of a uh, senator from the New York. It's a picture of Geraldine Ferraro, who was the first woman to be uh, nominated by the Democratic Party to be vice president. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of first. And to you fellas there at St. Joseph, this is another first. Uh, but it's not really a first to me because the North End has always been an open and welcoming community. So while it's Irish night here on the Prado and, and the North End, it's uh, certainly not a first as far as the North End is concerned in terms of opening its arms for the immigrant community, whether it be Italians or the Irish. We're down the street here, all these little kids that are, that are here. Um, we, uh, we're sitting around there and we're ready to come up here and the fella said to uh, the guy next to him, his wife next to him, he said, you know, I better, uh, I better, uh, I better stop drinking this wine here. It must be pretty strict, pretty strong. So homemade wine. So she said, "Well, you know, you're all right." So he says, "You only had one wine. 
Yeah, I know, but uh, I think I'm hearing Irish music down here in the North End. I must have, this wine must be stronger than I thought. You know, the, um, uh, John Joe is my dear friend. I don't want him to uh, steal the show here tonight, but uh, so I'm going to sing a song myself. I won't sing the whole thing because uh, we want to get on with the rest of the show, but John, it's not a, it's not an, it's not an Irish song. It's an Italian song. Anybody who knows it, join me, because I haven't sung this. The last time I sung this song, I think I sung it to the Holy Father himself, John Paul II, at, on St. Patrick's Day, believe it or not, at a St. Patrick's Day at the Vatican. So help me out with it, because I kind of forget it. I used to love the song. It was uh, one of my favorite songs when I was mayor. Virgin Mare Vagin more, a cord, a cord, pinchin per spa, stu marinare, a tinarezza, ma pamarezza, stunga. beautiful uh, ballads there is and I'm sure you've heard it loads of times but Polly's going to have a beautiful ballad called Danny Boy. Oh Danny Boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from Glen to Glen and on the mountainside. The summer's gone and all the rose is falling. Tis you, tis you, must go and I must find. Ring them loud. Thank you. 
Tell me now when I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. Though my hair is stolen at home, but that's alright till I go home. She is handsome, she is pretty, she is the belle, the belle, that city. She is the girl, and one, two, three, please tell me who. Lock the door and they ring the bell Mock me true love, are you well? Out she comes as white as snow Rings on her fingers, bells on her toes Johnny Murray says she'll die Doesn't get the fellow with the robe of mine Tell me now when I go home Boys won't leave the guards alone Put my hair in the snow to come But that's alright till I go home She's handsome, she is pretty She's the bell, the bell, that's city She's girt in one, two, three Please tell me who Stevie only sings one song every night And he sings it about Galway, but right. Three song called Galway Girl. I took a stroll down the old old walk the day I, I, I met a little girl and we stopped to talk on a fine soft day. I, I, Gentlemen, give a big welcome to Boston Police, give the call with pipes and drums. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a Boston Police getting home of types and drums.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Boston Police Gala Column of Pipes and Drums. Well, folks, that comes to the end of our show this evening. I want to thank everybody for joining us, and I certainly want to thank Ambassador Raymond Flynn and John Joe Summers for being our honorable guests tonight. I want to thank the St. Joseph Society. The feast indeed goes on all weekend.